I'm Tim Taylor. We were praying last night uh, during Kingdom League International's The Call to Pray for Our Nation, which we do every Thursday. And we pray for our president, we pray for this nation, and I, I had some insight the Lord gave me about the fire that broke out on the Bonham Richard in San Diego this past week. Uh, according to our Navy, it's an amphibious assault ship which burned through the night in San Diego at the tail end of two years of upgrades supporting the integration of the F-35 uh, Bravo, according to Navy documents. Now, if we go to an Iranian source, they claim likely arson, and they see it as a judgment of the God of Islam on the great Satan of America. And what I would uh, share with you, or what I would observe, is while we've had riots, BLM, Antifa, defund the police, all kinds of crazy stuff going on in our political realm with the Democrats, Republicans, and things. We've had various actors in our state seeking to undermine this nation. In addition to that, we have various national actors outside that also seek to disrupt and destroy this nation that want to see this nation go down as well. Like Russia, like uh, North Korea, China, and also Iran. And the thing is, the Bonham Richard is actually was the ship that John Paul Jones skippered during the American Revolution. In August 1779, Jones took command of the Bonham Richard and sailed around the British Isles. And on September 23rd, the Bonham Richard engaged the Serapis and the smaller Countess of Scarborough. In other words, the Bonham Richard was outnumbered and outgunned. It goes on to say how it engaged those two ships, and after inflicting considerable da damage to the Bonham Richard, the British uh, captain, Richard Pearson, of the Serapis, asked Jones if he would strike his colors, which is the naval signal for indicating surrender. From his disabled ship, Jones replied, famously, I have not yet begun to fight. And after three more hours of furious fighting, it was the Serapis and Countess of Scarborough who surrendered to Jones. After the victory, the Americans transferred to the Serapis from the Bonham Richard, which sank the next day. And the thing that I would emphasize here, this situation so reminds me of what's happening in America today. I think that this whole thing what's going on with the Bonham Richard is a prophetic sign of, uh, of what's happening right now. You see, it wasn't the ship or the vessel that was the key. It was the heart of the fight and the warrior and the skipper of the Bonham Richard, John Paul Jones, who happened to be the father of the American Navy, modern Navy. This whole fight, this whole thing that's going on in our nation reminds me of Joel chapter 2, which says this. It says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain, let the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming and is at hand. It's a day of darkness and gloominess, of clouds and th uh, thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. Here's the key. A people come, great and strong, like whom they've never been, nor will there ever be any such after them. Even for many successive generations, a fire burns before them, behind them a flame burns. If the land is like the Garden of Eden before them, behind them a desolate wilderness. It says nothing shall escape them. It goes on to say that they, uh, uh, they are like a people, in, in, uh, they're like a strong people set in battle array. They run like mighty wind. They climb the wall like men of war. Everyone marches in formation. They do not break ranks. They don't push one another. Everyone marches in his, in his own column. They run to and fro in the city and on the wall and climb into the house. They enter the windows like the thief. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and moon grow dark. It goes on to say this. The Lord gives voice before his army, for his camp is very great and strong is the one who executes his word. And I so sincerely believe there is a call God is issuing to the remnant church of today. There's a church that's in compromise. There's a church that's part of Babylon. There's a church that's blind. There's a per church that's apathetic and complacent. But there is a remnant of people that God is raising up for this very time. It says in Psalm 139 that these days were created for you.
It goes on to say in, in, in Joel, it goes on right after that. It says, turn to me with all your heart with weeping and fasting and mourning and rid your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord because he's slow to anger. He relents from doing harm. It says, blow a trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people and sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children in the nursing babes, let the bridegroom go up from her chamber. And it goes on to say, weep between the porch and the altar and say, spare your people. It's a call for a people to repent. And I've been hearing more and more voices calling for repentance in this nation. And I would submit to you, it's a time not to get all caught up in this battle or that battle, but to keep your eye upon the Lord about what's on his, our father's heart. What's he doing behind the scenes? What's he, what's the real intent here? Because right now we are being distracted by so many superficial things. We need to keep our mind and our heart about what the real issue is here. It goes on to talk about how the Lord will remove far from you the northern army. It says, be glad you children of Zion. He has given you the former rain faithfully. He will also cause the rain to come down as the former rain, the latter rain together in the first week, that the threshing floors might be full of wheat and the vats might overflow with new wine and oil. You see, there is a people God's calling forth because, my friends, there is a harvest of souls to be had. There is a tremendous end-time harvest to be had of souls. And right now, many of us have prayed for a great awakening, and many of this is, this is not coming like many of you assume a revival would come. But I'm telling you, in the midst of all these challenges, this horrible time, there is a people arising there is a great awakening occurring and i am excited to be a part of it and i pray you are too it goes on to say that god will pour out a spirit upon all flesh your sons and daughters will prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and all my maid servants and all my man servants i will pour out my spirit in those days and i will show wonders in the heavens and the earth blood fire pillars of smoke sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood but it goes on to say this and whoever calls upon the name of the lord shall be saved for in mount zion and jerusalem there will be deliverance listen to this as the lord has said among the remnant whom the lord calls that's powerful my friends god is raising up a remnant for this season at this time. And again, I think this whole thing that happened at the bottom, Richard, is a sign. We may lose this ship, but I'm telling you, it's, it's about a people that come out of that kind of condition. There is a people arising in this nation for this time. You were made for this time. I'm going to say this. I pray, let not the slanderer be established in this earth. Let not the slanderer who seeks to advance the cause of our adversary, Satan, who seeks to kill, steal, destroy, and sow discord, who seeks to, who is a murderer, who is also called in John 8, 44, the father of lies, who exalts himself against the truth. I say, let not the slanderer be established in the earth. Let not Satan have his way. But I pray for this nation that it would fulfill its prophetic destiny. I call for this remnant people. I say to the north, give them up south, pull them not back. Become my sons and daughters from afar. We call forth the assuming together of the body of Christ. We say, let not the governor Newsom or any other governor who seeks to distract, who who seeks to separate, who seeks to silence the church, be successful. But I say, open your mouth. This is the year of the mouth. It's the year to proclaim the word of the Lord. So church, be not silent. But I say, and I call forth that remnant to lend their lips, to lend your voice to the word of the Lord and to give voice to that because the Lord is strong and he will work upon beha on behalf of those who execute his work. So we pray for the salvation and deliverance of this nation, that this nation might fulfill the end time purpose our Father has for this nation to play in this harvest and in his plan. It's not about President Trump. It's not about the Republican Party or anything like that. It's about my Father's plan being done and this nation serving its purpose. And I pray we hit the mark in Jesus' name.